السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. الحمد لله. We want to welcome everyone to this uh, family event. Uh, it is a continuation of the Confident Muslim series where we look at Muslims that are doing incredible things, mashallah, in their spaces and that are holding on strong and firm to their faith. And we're blessed, alhamdulillah, to have with us Brother Ambry Thomas, alhamdulillah, Ramin from Michigan, uh, who also plays for the San Francisco 49ers. I'm sure a lot of you uh, love the Niners here in Dallas. Uh, so, uh, but you love him as a Muslim, even if you don't love his team, alhamdulillah. So, we're blessed to have you here, alhamdulillah. Uh, he's not Sheikh Yasser Brajas. He's sitting in Sheikh Yasser's chair. Uh, we're discussing a trade. But he's actually thinking about, uh, subhanAllah, as soon as he sat there, he actually, he's, he's watched, alhamdulillah, some of the programs, that, the, the late night Ramadans. But, uh, alhamdulillah, he's actually thinking about moving here to Valley Ranch. So, do you all want to see him move to Valley Ranch? Alhamdulillah. So, we might have you and your family, inshallah. Uh, with us in the Valley Ranch community during the off season. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Brother Ambry is uh, married, got married last year, is expecting, mashallah, his first child. Uh, we ask Allah to make it a safe and healthy and blessed delivery. Allahumma ameen. Um, his wife is Egyptian. So, Alhamdulillah, those of you that are Muslim, Egyptian, you have another uh, connection. Sheikh Yusuf Bakir is Egyptian as well. So. Uh, but alhamdulillah, we wanted to show him a lot of love and obviously we wanted to, you know, pick his brain about what it's like to be Muslim in the space that he's in. Now, we're going to start off with the most comfortable part of this, which was uh, Ambry's 2021 interception that took the 49ers to the playoffs. 2021-22 season, uh, Brother Ambry intercepts Matthew Stafford to take the 49ers to the playoffs that year, and several brothers caught you on the sideline doing sajda to shukur, you know, prostrating, and that's when a lot of people start to ask questions about who you were, what your background was, and the first time that you had reached out to me was uh, in 2021, and it was a question about zakah, so I don't know, <laughs> you know, uh, that was the first time I'd ever heard anything from you, but alhamdulillah, I mean, you know, over the years getting to, to know sort of the way that you've carried yourself. Uh, this is sort of a moment that you've been making dua for your entire life, right? You, you work for this moment, Allah puts you in a place. Let's just start from the question that I'm sure you've been asked many times. How did it feel to be in that moment? What did that do for your dua, for your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to really have that level of success, that childhood dream culminate? Um, honestly, it just made me so much more grateful because like, uh, I'm getting emotional talking about it, but it felt like everything I prayed for, like even if it didn't come when I wanted it to, like it came at the perfect time, and subhanAllah, mashallah, alhamdulillah. And it was just so like, the joy it brought to my heart, just to know that God always listened and he's always near. It's just comfort within myself, knowing that I can pray whenever and he will answer, not even if he don't answer the way I want him to, but he's gonna answer the way I need him to. So it's just like, my connection just grew 10 times. So growing up, obviously you weren't a Muslim, but you're hearing about Islam. Right. Talk me through your initial impressions about Islam growing up. You grew up in Michigan, so you knew a lot of Muslims. Correct. So what did you know about Islam growing up? Honestly, I didn't know that much about it. Um, I'm just about to be honest, like, the way like the world or the way media or the way movies portray Islam, it was just like the total opposite picture I had of it. Like I'm thinking, excuse my ignorance everyone, but I'm thinking honestly like terrorists and stuff like that. But like when I got to learn about the Islam and just learn about the religion itself, like it's like a slap in the face to even like compare or even put like our religion on something like that. That's how I feel like, and it's just like, I don't know, like, <laughs> it's crazy. When's the first time that you heard about Islam and understood like, there's something about this religion that's different that I should actually look into? Um, I would say, what, uh, seventh grade, my dad was incarcerated and um, he had got back and he brought us the religion, but he didn't bring it to us in the right form. The first time he brought us like uh, the nation 
And we were like, no, nah, like something ain't right about this, but I get what you're saying, but something not right. And then uh, um, he went back to jail and he came back with Sunni. And like, we just fell in love with her, all my siblings, my whole family. And we just felt connected from that moment. Like we have to learn more about it. And it's just like, we all running to learn more about it at that point. And when did you feel your first like real connection at a personal level to Islam? You know, where you felt like this is your religion and this is something that you have a direct connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with? Honestly, I can say when I first picked up the Quran and I started reading it, it just appealed to my heart more and it just felt like it fit me more than anything else. And then when I started praying and praying on time and get extra prayers in third of the night and seeing God really answer those prayers, like it, it just like hit me in a whole different way. Like he's here, he's listening. We can't see him, but he sees us all the time. So all this is happening, you're getting to know, and obviously we're gonna, I know all these kids, mashallah, have a lot of questions for you about what it's like. A lot of these kids grow up and their dream is to play in the NFL, their dreams to play in the NBA. And this kind of has to become your sole focus, right? So I'm assuming that as you start to look into Islam and you start to look into faith as a whole, you've also got this trajectory where you're trying to make it to the NFL, you're trying to make it to the NFL, you're trying to make it to the NFL, right? And you have to balance these things. What is it like to dream about going to the NFL and then actually making it to the NFL? And what does that do for your faith and your spirituality at that moment? I say dreaming about it and it actually happening is like one thing, but like praying on it, then dreaming about it, you're visualizing it and you see God put you in these positions and you feel like, oh, I feel like I've been here before. Like, you have been there before. Like, and that's exactly what I felt like. Um, yeah, I just felt like God always put me in the right position. When I prayed, he knew exactly what he was doing the whole time. Like, but it all started with my prayers and doing them on time, honestly. So how do you pray five times a day as an NFL player? <laughs> I would say you can always pray far as on time but throughout the day, this is how my schedule will go. Like our first meeting will be like eight to like, it'd be like eight to nine, we meet. Nine to 10, we'll go lift. Between 10 and 10, 15, you have a small window to eat, pray, whatever you're prioritizing. But after that, you go to practice. After practice, you can always pray. You have like an hour window, so that's when I usually make up my missed prayers. Even if I don't pray them on time, I'm always making them up. And uh, well, our day usually ends around probably like four, so Maghrib would just be coming in, so I go home, get ready for that. And So do your teammates, now, yeah, alhamdulillah, I, I think that one of the blessings is, is that a lot of people don't know you're Muslim, so that probably opens the door for a lot of conversations. What's it like when people find out that you're Muslim in the NFL? Um, a lot of them have more questions about it, about what drew, drew me towards the religion, what is Islam, what is the difference between Islam and Christianity, and I try to explain to my best ability, and just explaining them from my growing up, me being, or me, yeah, growing up Christian, and now me being Muslim, I try to explain them the differences, but um, yeah, when they see me pray, and a lot of them see me get what I pray for, or that, that sparks a lot of question. So let's like walk, let, let's actually go through one of these scenarios. I'm an NFL player, I walk up to you, I say, hey, I heard you're Muslim. Why are you Muslim? Why out of all things? It's curious, right? Why did you become Muslim? What is it? Why are you Muslim? Pretend I'm a non-Muslim in an NFL locker room that finds out Ambry Thomas is a Muslim. I would tell him just because um, I grew up seeing different things. I grew up Christian and I seen the other side and just to have a community as unified as the Muslim community, I don't think it's nothing like it in the world, honestly. You go anywhere in the world, if you're Shalom Alaikum, that, that goes a long way. That goes a very long way. I don't know no Arabic, but I go Egypt, I go to uh, Somalia, I go 
anywhere Middle East, salam alaikum, they greet me back and it, it feels like family, honestly. So you've been to the Muslim world. You actually, mashallah, I remember you reached out and you said that you want to go do charity work. You've been to Somalia. Correct. You've, where else have you been, mashallah, uh, to do some? What, Somalia, we've been to South Africa, and we went to, yeah, Somalia, South Africa for work. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Now, with all this happening, alhamdulillah, you have introduced people to Islam. And we just saw you had a teammate that became Muslim as well recently. Uh, he took Shahada in Frisco. <laughs> Tell me about finding out about that and what your conversations have been with, uh, like with him so far. Um, like even before he came Muslim, he asked me one question about it, but I didn't think he was really interested in it. So it's kind of some stuff like you plant the seed and you go back to see if it wants more knowledge or if the plant has grown. But it, if it hasn't, you kind of leave it alone. You don't want nobody to, to uh, run astray from it. But um, when he converted, I hit him up immediately, congratulating him, telling him his love always. And like now our conversations just go more, a little bit more in the depth. But he asked me, how do you pray or how do you do this? And I'm still asking him stuff, even though he's new to religion, but we can learn from anybody. And mashallah, um, your mother is ready to take shahada, alhamdulillah. So one of the good news, by the way, that we have is that his mother your mother was actually going to fly down and take shahada here at Valley Ranch Islamic Center, inshallah ta'ala. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us the opportunity to give her shahada uh, soon in the Nahi ta'ala. How many closet Muslims are in the NFL, man? This is a question. Like, you got a lot of closet Muslims in the NFL, right? Most definitely. I would say there's, there's a lot on a lot of teams. It's just I feel like um, not a lot of people are comfortable expressing their religion yet. But I feel like with me, it's out there. I don't hide it. That's what I love. I love Allah. I do it for Allah. Everything I do is for Him. And I just feel like it's something to be proud about. Alhamdulillah. So on your Instagram, uh, let, me, let me actually see this right quick. What's your, what's your bio looks like? It says, Allah faqat. That's what it says in Arabic when you open your bio. I fear Allah only. What made you put that there? Because I feel like uh, just in my lifetime, growing up in Detroit, I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot. And after I feel like you see so much, it's only one, one thing in this universe that can scare you. And that's a lot. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm not scared of nothing. Like, I'm scared of that man above. That's, that's it. That's it. So obviously, you're scared of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No human being. No, no other thing. No one else causes you fear. No one else drives your action. What do you say about Muslims, Muslim kids that sometimes feel like it's scary to be Muslim in public, it's scary to be Muslim around, around others? I, say, I should say that you guys should show up more. You never know who you're influencing. You might be influencing your parent to be more tuned in with the religion. You might be influencing your younger sibling. And I say you're going to strengthen your connection with Allah by doing so. Just for the sake of yourself, like, you stick to that, you build that ground right now while you're young. When you get older, you care less what anybody say about you, doing what you got to do for your creator. How do you, what do you say to young people that want to make it to the NFL or want to make it to the NBA? How much do they have to work out? You got to work. Honestly, <laughs> you got to work all day, every day. Like, my boy right there, like, we've been down here working, like, I would probably get one day off, if that, a week, but we're working every day. We go two days out here in the heat, but, like, that's what it's about. Like, you got to put yourself in uncomfortable situations to grow. Like, I'm uncomfortable being up here, but it's for the sake of Allah. I'm growing. I'm, like, I'm doing it for Allah. I'm growing, and that's what life is about, I feel like, putting yourself in uncomfortable situations in order for you to grow. Absolutely. And subhanAllah, you actually... I remember you actually said you want to help inspire Muslim youth. You want to do programming with Muslim youth. You want to start foundations. You want to use whatever success you have to build other people up. For a lot of young Muslims, they're looking up to you and you're living their dream right now. How do you not lose perspective? How do you, how do you maintain Jannah as your goal? Because at the end of the day, this is not the dream. The dream is Jannah. And everything I try doing in this lifetime, I wanted to get me to Jannah. Like, that's, 
my end goal. I want to get the genre. Like, I want to touch as many people as I can, but I want to get, I'm trying to get myself, my loved ones, all my brothers, sisters to genre. And I want to see as many people as I can go. Inshallah, we all go. So I'm going to um, put something up here. So you, you came to Dallas. Yeah, um, my rookie season, we played Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs. I believe we beat them. <laughs> <laughs> so on behalf of all the, uh, the, the non-Cowboy Muslims, non-Cowboy fans, uh, I'd like to just pull up that picture so you all can look at it. Jazakallah uh, khair. May Allah reward you. Uh, but for the Cowboys fans, they'll say, may Allah forgive you. You can see that they're, they're here strong. But, you know, subhanAllah, I think that as you're going through the NFL, and you're going through season after season, one of the things that I think people probably don't appreciate is that you have to work extremely hard, and there is a lot of uncertainty. It's one catch. It's one roster change. It's one coach change. It's one play. It's, it's a game of seconds. Right? And we were talking about this today, this idea of precision, a game of seconds, and learning to trust the qadr of Allah. What is it like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't answer a dua the way that you want him to answer your dua? How do you still stay strong as a Muslim? See, um, I'm about to tell y'all one of my experiences in college. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, colitis, IBS, and I was in the hospital for like a month and a half, and just all blood in my stool, like for the whole month. I probably got down to like 135. I went from like 175 to 135, like in a month. And the only thing I can think about, like it's God, you get me up out of this. I, I'm eating right, I'm eating right, I'm doing whatever you need me to do. But in reality, I feel like when I really just sat down in there and realized like, okay, I'm gonna be here in a minute, I start getting closer and just tightening my relationship with God any way I can, whether it was reading, watching videos, praying, and then like, just staying committed to what I needed to do. Like, Cause I was in the hospital. I used to walk the, walk the staircases with, I, I kid you not, I used to walk the uh, staircases like with, with gallon waters, like no muscles, no nothing. Like I couldn't lift it, couldn't do nothing. And uh, all I could remember was just like the people, my support system around me, like, come on, Amber, you got this. My wife, my mom, come on, you got this, you're good. And I'm just thinking that whole season, like I'm not about to play. And it's two weeks out to the season, I'm 140 pounds. I look like I'm sick, like I'm, I look very sick. And um, subhanAllah, like a week later, I started getting my weight back. And what, the week after that, I started hopping back into practice. In that first game of the season, like I caught an interception, had a fumble recovery, tackle for loss. I just had my best game ever. And everyone was like, wow, like you ain't practiced this whole time. How do you do that? And I told them, I was like, the whole time I was in there, I was praying. I was asking God to put me in this position and just show him I'm grateful and just to show him I would never go astray from him and just show him I'm there with him. And I, everything that year, it happened the way I planned it to. And, well, the way he planned it to, but it happened the way, it happened the exact way, even though I didn't even think I was gonna play that season. Like, I was devastated from that, but I just stayed committed to my faith at the end of the day. So, mashallah, you're, you've been through those ups and downs, you've seen it, and I think you're teaching youth especially the importance of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through all of that. If Allah gives you Inshallah, you're still young in the NFL, alhamdulillah, you're still in your third year. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you everything that you want from a worldly perspective, gives you success in the NFL, allows you to win championships, allows you to beat the Cowboys many times, <laughs> allows you to win Super Bowls, allows you to be an MVP, the, you know, Allah gives you everything that you could possibly want. What is your dream trajectory? What do you want to be looking back at 20 years from now, inshallah, and saying, like, I, I did my best as a Muslim? What does that look like if I'm interviewing you 20 years from now? What do you want to see yourself? I just want to say that um, I want to be able to look myself in the mirror and say that I use my key that God gave me, that being football, as a key to touch and help as many people as I can with my influence, with my money, with whatever. 
Like every time I pray, I ask a lot to put me in position to be next to people like Omar and be in position to help and give back. And subhanAllah, like it's happening, it's, it's, it's happened, and I'm just grateful for that. MashaAllah, takbir. All right, is that enough Cowboys hate for you guys? We're, we're, I'm not, all right, we're going to open it up to questions, though, inshallah. Ta'ala. So we want to let the audience ask their questions, inshallah. Uh, do we have an extra mic, or should we just pass this one around, or people just raise their hands? All right, we'll take the first, the first set of questions, inshallah. Whoever wants to raise their hands, if you can speak loud enough. All right, you want, you want to ask a question? So the question is, when when you when he got that interception against the Rams, what was going through his what was going through your head in those moments? Um, the first thing that hit my head was like, uh, God answered my prayer honestly because I asked for like a a season in a game in an interception, but I asked for it at the beginning of the season though. But it came when I needed it though. Get what I'm saying? But yeah, like Subhanallah, it came like that and. I was just so grateful. I couldn't even tell you right now what I was thinking. What you saw on the video, that, that's what was going through my mind. Like, but um, yeah, I was very excited. I, can't, I couldn't even tell you. All right, anyone else? You guys can ask your questions, inshallah. Yeah, what's your question? The NFL pay you? Yes, they do pay me. <laughs> it's a great question. Does the NFL pay you? The NFL does pay you, alhamdulillah. All right. Here, come up and ask your question. Come on, bro. How did it feel to get drafted into the NFL? Um, I would say it felt like really amazing to get drafted into the NFL and just to know that God answered my prayers and just to know that all my hard work paid off to a certain extent, even though I'm still working to, towards something bigger. Isn't it so good? Can you have led your team to victory over the Eagles? Because it seems like the 49ers are like sleeping. Yeah, hold on. Y'all heard, heard the question? Heard the question. <laughs> You have to repeat the question. Tell so in his mic. You have to repeat the question. When you guys played your Eagles, when you guys played the Eagles, if you were so good, maybe you could have led your team to the victory because it seems like the 49ers were sleeping on offense. I agree with him. I agree with him. Every dog has his day. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> Still under contract right now. We talk after this year. <laughs> Any other questions, inshallah, brothers, sisters, please do ask. Yeah. Go ahead. And you mentioned several times about praying on time. Mm -hmm. And that alone is structure, right? Correct. To get to where you've gotten to, you must have had a lot of structure in everything. In your diet. I mean, how do you teach kids? Focus on Focus. structure, not just everything. Leads every day, leads every day. Yeah, it leads to prayer. I'm happy you asked that. And I'm going to start it with diet, too. But um, going back I'll, to I'll the repeat the question. So the question is, how do you teach kids to focus on structure? Stru you know, obviously, being a, a professional athlete requires structure with your diet, structure with your sleep, structure with everything and your prayers. So how do you teach kids to focus on that? Um, I'm going to start with the uh, diet thing. I will say, like, when I was in the hospital, Allah put like a kind of a reset on me to like, okay, start eating the right things, start treating your body how you, how far you want it to go. And um, that's the message I got from him being in the hospital that long. So once I got out, I started eating all the right things. I noticed when I was eating right, I started feeling better. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep doing this, praying on time. I noticed when I prayed on time, my days were easier, less stress. Everything I wanted to do, I accomplished for the day. 
and I felt like I was honestly getting better at when I wanted whatever I wanted to accomplish in life. So, yes, got to be right. I think that's subhanAllah one of the important concepts in Islam is that you can't have ihsan, which is excellence in output, unless you have itqan, which is excellence in process. And especially with young people, finding that structure, finding that discipline, not just young people, honestly. If you want to attain something, you have to give it your all. And so to take that worldly you know, prize, there is a tiny percentage of people who get to make it to the NFL or make it to a professional uh, league. You translate that to your pursuit of religion. So I'm actually going to piggyback on that question. How do you take that structure and then put it towards your pursuit of religion? Your, your reading, your, your thinking about how to become a better Muslim. How do you bring that same mindset to becoming a better Muslim as well? I say it's easier if you have, everyone has a goal at the end of the day. We all want to go to Jannah, right? That's everyone's goal, right? then you're going to do certain things in your life to set you up for Jannah. You're going to pray on time. You're going to learn more about the Prophet, may peace be upon him. You're going to learn about your creator. It's just certain stuff you're going to do to put yourself in a better relation to him on the Day of Judgment. So, Henry, let me ask you this question. I, I don't want to take it from the, the crowd, but I think it's important. You meet a lot of people that seem to have it all, right? We're talking about the superstars of the superstars. And a lot of kids look up to them, but you know that they're actually really empty. Yeah, honestly, it's a lot of people out there that have a lot of money, but just to uh, really talk to them and get to know them, they really don't have nothing when you really get to talk to them because like, they're coming from a broken place and they're just so, money's everything, cars are everything, this is everything, that is everything, and nothing is about God. And it's, honestly, it's sad to me like, when I can ask somebody a question, because I do this all the time, and I, I, be, I truly believe everybody should have one answer to this. That's what I think. I ask them, I say, what do you think your purpose is of life? They, oh, raise my family, get this amount of money, live lavish like that. I want to be in the NFL. I want to live over there. I want to stay over there. And I say, I tell everybody, like, everybody, true purpose of life is just to get closer with our creator. He puts us in difficult positions and challenges every day just for us to get closer to him. He gives you what you want for you to get closer to him. He takes from you for you to get closer to him. Everything he does, I feel like, in our world is for us to get closer to him. And it just hurts me on the inside, honestly, when people don't see that or they ask God, why has he done this to me? He's done this to you for you to get closer to him. Beautiful answer, mashallah. Uh, truly a beautiful answer. And I think that, uh, alhamdulillah, when you, when you see someone that, that's exposed to that world and, and knows that it's not all that, you know, it's really not fulfilling as people think it is. Whereas having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if you have very little from a worldly perspective, is incredibly fulfilling, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So if someone were to ask you, you know, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about becoming Muslim. Let's talk about those, those private Muslims in the NFL. But I also don't want to be judged by the Muslim community. You know, like it's hard. You convert to Islam, and I think sort of along the lines of what Adi was asking, like, hey, you become a Muslim, and now suddenly everything you say, everything you do, the Muslim community might look at you and like, not, not really. How do you support someone like that? How do you tell someone, hey, take that step. You could inspire many other people, because we know there are a lot of prominent Muslims that <laughs> people don't know are Muslims that if they told the world they were Muslims, they would do an incredible amount of da'wah. So what do you say to those people that are like, you know, I'm afraid of just the outside as well as the inside, as I'm trying to grow the expectations? I would tell them first, just take that first step for God and take that step towards Him, regardless of what anybody thinks. Like, it's going to be difficult. You're going to have your different opinions or what people think you should or shouldn't be doing. But at the end of the day, I feel like that's not between nobody besides you and your creator. And as long as you're building your connection with him and you're strengthening that bond, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Uh, alaikum. How do you manage fasting in Ramadan while being an NFL player? <laughs> that's the hardest thing ever, honestly. But um, normally, he, when it's uh, the month of Ramadan, we're usually off. Like, we don't have to report to no team training. So honestly, uh, yeah, I trap myself in the house, I'll fast, but 
working out, a lot of that stuff I'm not doing. Um, I do a little bit of lifting weights and stuff, but I'm not doing a lot of stuff to burn energy until I done broke my fast. Then I'm going about my day normally with my workouts and stuff, but for the most part of the day, I'm making sure I'm just getting my prayers in, I'm reading. That's all that matters to me at that point. Assalamu alaikum. So what do you advise athletes that forgo food in order to lose weight? I would say, um, oh, it's kind of hard. I would say increase the fruit intake, lower carbs, a little bit uh, more protein and carbs, and yeah, just a lot of smoothies and stuff like that to lose weight. But I would say it's hard to do that again because like we need our energy, and it's hot out here in Texas. Like I ain't never been out here. It's burning up out here. I don't know how y'all do it. <laughs> Shoot, but uh, yeah, like. I would say it's kind of hard because like a lot of us males, athletes, we need our energy. We're we burning our calories every day. We burning just walking around, playing, like that's kind of hard. Uh, well, who's a major role model that you look up to? A major role model. Are we talking about from a football aspect or life in general? Um, life, I would say my father, just because like he brought me to this path, and um, I'm just grateful for him for showing me this. And football, I kind of look up to everybody. I kind of take a little bit from everybody game. Um, if you guys familiar with Jordan Lewis, he played for the Dallas Cowboys. We went to Michigan together. Look up to him. Take from his game. I take from everybody game and just make it to my own. Assalamu alaikum My question was, um, I've seen a lot of Muslim athletes, and being a Muslim obviously requires a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work. How does being a Muslim sort of translate into being the MF NFL? What I mean by that is, how does that sort of translate in your lifestyle? I've seen a lot of people like Khabib, he, he's a devout Muslim, but it's helped him become an amazing athlete. So how has that helped you in that sense? Discipline, like discipline, discipline, discipline. You're going to be disciplined with your prayers. You're going to be disciplined with your food intake. You're going to be, be disciplined about being at work 20 minutes before. It's just discipline. It's about locking into the little things that's going to take you over the board. And honestly, I lock into the little things. Praying on time, like it changed my life. Like praying on time, I promise, it changed my life. Like I got everything I wanted. Alhamdulillah. And it's just the little things, though. Little things. What do you do when you're not playing football? <laughs> or working out? Or working out. I'm sleep or eat it. <laughs> How did it feel like when you when you were in the NFL or were a Muslim? You say that again. How did it feel? How, how did it feel like when you became a Muslim? Oh, uh, it felt amazing when I became a Muslim. Like I just felt like my whole life was easier, and I just felt more connected with Earth and everything around me itself. Um, why did you start playing um, football? Um, I started playing football because my older brothers played it, and I just like competing, and I felt like I was better than my older brother. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just wanted to do, honestly, I, I was being a follower. I wanted to do what he did. Then I realized I was actually pretty good at it, so I decided to make this my route to help my family. Uh, as uh, so like in the NFL, there's like a lot of d distractions, like, the dunya and stuff like that. So how do you uh, stay away from those distractions and be a Muslim? I don't want to scare nobody about when I say this, but like I think about death a lot. Like we get, we all can die any time, and the more you remember death, the more you're not going to do the nonsense that you would do if you weren't thinking about it. Put it like that. 
Um, a lot of parents here are afraid to let their boys play football. So what are your feelings about concussions? You're inshallah gonna have a newborn and would you let him or her play? Um, I would say if my son wanted to play football, I wouldn't stop him. I would just advise him and let him know what could happen. But if he wanted to play, I wouldn't, I, I don't think I would stop him because ultimately God has written everything out and if it was meant to happen, it's gonna happen. Sound like <clears throat> So sometimes we have these worldly dreams or these um, humans that we look up to or heroes. And when we get there or we meet these people, sometimes we don't find it to be what it was. Sometimes dunya puts us down. So when it comes to your path to the NFL, what do you advise anybody that really looks up, like has a worldly goal and like is doing everything to that, towards that worldly goal, right? Um, did you find it to be what it was? And do you advise, you know, how do you advise? Um, I would say I didn't find it to be what it was when I got there. I felt like it was all just a big illusion. Like somebody on TV just say, oh, this person, Ambry Thomas. Now everyone knows Ambry Thomas, so my face gets put out there more or whatever and it's just like it's a bigger image for you but like they just regular people like I guard the best receivers week in week out and it's just like the more I look at them it's just like this is a regular person I'm not going off of what I heard off TV or anything like that like this is a regular person he's gonna have to show me like he's whoever you he say he is hold on what was the uh, what was the second half of your question I would tell them to remember the end goal and just uh, focus on one little thing at a time. Whether that's whatever you want to work towards, just make that your main goal and always put God first and everything will always like pan out the way it's supposed to. Uh, first of all, Stafford is, Matthew Stafford is from here in Dallas, so your, your Dallas roots were laid pretty early. Um, just a just a question about football is very uh, there's a lot of religious people in football a lot of christians and things like that what's your interfaith dialogue like with uh people who are really strong practicing christians who aren't really seeking to learn about islam to convert but really to learn to understand you or you know just to create a healthy environment in the locker room um basically i always like respect whatever they believe in but i always i always because i tell them I was Christian at, at first. I got baptized Christian, and um, I always just plant a seed in their ear. ear. I say something smart for them to think about, and just leave them thinking about it all night, whether they come back to me the next day or not. I leave them thinking about something where they're going to want to eventually ask more questions about Islam. What was the game where, um, other than the one with the interception? You said what? What was the game uh, other than the one with the interception? Like, like, what was the best game? My best game personally? I would say my best game personally against the Cowboys that year. Y'all yeah, look up that film, shut down y'all top receivers. I said that was a pretty good game for me. <laughs> Mashallah, we got some good news, man. So, alhamdulillah, you brought Brother Demario to the masjid, and uh, Demario was asking questions, and you mentioned it to me earlier today, you wanted to bring your brother, and, and he's actually ready to embrace Islam, mashallah. So I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you stand up, inshallah, and Demario, I'm gonna have you come up to the, to the front, inshallah, and I'm gonna, no, but you're gonna have to give him a bigger hug than, than anybody else here. When... With, with, with this man, I don't, I don't know if he told you, but man, I, I got a special place in, in my heart for this man. I met him when he was about 16 years old, and I was a highly recruited football player. I'm older than him, and when I met him, he was just he was just a you know, junior in high school. And I, I remember I asked, I was like, who's the best player in Michigan? I was already playing SEC football, Division I. I was already got highly recruited. I was like, man, who's the best? I mean, he stood up immediately. And man, it was a fire in his eyes. And I told him when he was 17 years old that he was gonna be in the NFL, he was gonna be a great player. And it, and it all came true. He just, he, man, I see a vision for him. 
that he, <laughs> that he probably don't see for himself sometimes. But that's, that's my brother. MashaAllah. Well, you're about to become brothers in Islam as well, brothers in faith as well. And your close relationship is beautiful. And, and you know, you mentioned your grandmother always told you belief in one God. Yes. And you always held that belief in one God. And that's kind of what instilled the beautiful position of Islam in your heart. And you've been training Ambry and you all have been talking. And alhamdulillah, uh, we're, we're blessed to welcome you. You just does, see, he's going to go back home to Michigan uh, or to, to, to San Francisco. But now you're going to be a part of our community until he sir. finishes winning his Super Bowl, inshallah. Then he comes back and moves here for the offseason, inshallah. Yes, sir. But Brother DeMario, um, alhamdulillah, we're, we're really uh, excited to welcome you as well, inshallah. So I'm going to have you repeat after me. It's going to be in Arabic yes, and in sir. English. There is no baptism, no pool. That's really simple. <laughs> you just repeat the testimony of faith and you become a Muslim, inshallah. Yes, sir. And uh, that is the greatest piece of news that we have uh, tonight. Alhamdulillah. I'm sure Ambry's really excited. No, this, this, is the, this is the greatest piece of news. MashaAllah. <laughs> may Allah bless you both, inshallah. And may Allah unite all of us in paradise together you, and, and allow you to be brothers on thrones in paradise. I mean, so if you will repeat after me, and when you do, when you become Muslim, all of your previous sins are forgiven. Every single thing you've ever done in your life in one moment disappears. And all of the good that you've done stays. Yes, sir. And from what I've heard about you through Ambry, you've done a lot of good mentoring young players and, and doing a lot of good in your life. And so you have a clean slate as you start. Yes, sir. And so it's a beautiful moment, and I want you to repeat after me. I'm going to go in Arabic first, really slowly, and then in English, inshallah. All right? So say, Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An. An. La. Na. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wa. Well. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu Ashhadu Anna Anna Muhammadan Muhammadan Rasul Rasul Allah Allah I bear witness I bear witness that there is only one God that there is only one God worthy of worship worthy of worship and unconditional obedience in unconditional obedience and that Muhammad Muhammad is his final messenger is his final messenger Takbir <laughs> Allahu Akbar, takbir. <laughs> welcome. I'm going to give you a hug as well. Yes, sir. Thank and then welcome to our community. Welcome home. Yes, sir. So this is your home. And these are now all your brothers and sisters. So you're going to have to hug each and every single one of them. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> and, um, I, think, I think this is the best way to conclude uh, our program, alhamdulillah. So we want to thank you, Ambry, for coming. And inshallah, we hope that Valley Ranch becomes your future home as well. But Everyone here is going to be rooting for you and making dua for you. And uh, Damari, we want to welcome you as well uh, to your new community, to your new home. Jazakumullah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.